Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Teacher Michael and I make videos all about the world of online teaching. So if that's something that you're interested in, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on future videos. It's been a while since I made a video and I am extremely excited to be back on YouTube. And if you've seen any of my videos before, you might notice that I have a new background. And that is really just because I was getting bored of the other one. And that is the topic of today's video. I want to talk about boredom. Boring! I know that boredom happens oftentimes with our students in the classroom. Believe me, I was a bored student for the majority of my childhood. But it does also happen to teachers. We get bored of the curriculum. We get bored of our own teaching methods. We get bored of some of our students. So in this video, I want to talk about why. Why is this happening? Why do people like us get bored with the curriculum and with our classes? I also want to talk about a few things that you can do to keep things fresh in the class if you are feeling bored. And then finally, I want to talk about, you know, if you're totally over teaching ESL online, if you're just, you want something totally different, I'm going to also talk about some of my experience teaching with OutSchool. If one of those things are more interesting to you than another one, I'm also going to leave timestamps in the description of this video, so feel free to skip ahead and get to the part of the video that is the most interesting for you. Without further ado, we're going to take this video on the road. I want to get outside. You can see right now that the video is getting brighter. The sun is shining. It's super hot inside, which is extremely rare for Eastern Canada. So uh, if you're with me, let's do it. Between the time of the intro of this video and now, uh, I got a haircut and now I'm walking the dog so I'm just looking for a spot but I do want to continue this conversation and talk about why you might be getting bored with your online ESL classes. I just got to find somewhere to sit down here. When I say bored, when I say that maybe you're getting bored or that I've been getting bored, um, maybe bored is the wrong word. I could also maybe use the word like things have been getting monotonous or I feel a little bit burnt out or that sort of thing. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. And there's a few reasons that I think this happens. One reason I think could just be too much of one thing, too much of the same thing. I've been teaching online for the last three years, more than three years by this point, but um, I've always had kind of some other form of income during that time. So teaching online was never my sole source of income. And I've always said that I think that online teaching makes a great side gig or a part-time job, but it's really difficult to maintain for a long period of time doing it full time. So that could be what you're going through if you've been feeling kind of, you know, burnt out or bored in the classroom. It could just be that you're doing it too much. And maybe it's time to find another part-time job or something else that can supplement your teaching income or replace part of it or something like that. So it may be time to scale back. For the first two years of my teaching career online, I was splitting my time between being a theater performer partly and an English teacher partly. So when I was away on tour performing shows, uh, I wasn't teaching very much. And when I was away, I was kind of missing the classroom. I was missing my daily routine. So I would always come back to online teaching energized and excited about it. And then after a couple of months when it became kind of monotonous again or I got bored of the routine, it was always time to go back out on tour. So I was excited to go back out on tour. And that kind of went back and forth for a couple of years. So for me, taking a break from each of those jobs is what gave me the energy to return to it with enthusiasm. The other thing that I've been thinking about recently and partly why I think I feel this way is because at a certain point, you stop learning in any job. You know, I've had jobs at restaurants and hotels and after the initial learning period of a couple of months, when you start feeling comfortable and like you've, you know, become really proficient in your job, um, it's a little bit less exciting. There's less to learn. You don't feel like you're developing yourself professionally anymore. Sorry, I just got really, really dark there under a cloud. Let me brighten this up. And that's something that's happened to me in almost every job that I've had. When I feel like I've, you know, reached a point where I'm no longer learning or progressing anywhere in my career, I tend to get bored and start thinking of what the next thing is that I can do. 
At first, when I started teaching online, everything was new. Uh, there was, you know, an endless list of things to learn. I had to learn the technology, I had to learn the lingo, the curriculum, the teaching style. It was a whole new teaching style. I was used to teaching people in person, so getting used to the online dynamic was new. So, you know, it was endlessly engaging for me. My mind was always racing. I was always thinking about new ways to do things in the classroom. And then after a while, I kind of found my rhythm. I learned the technology, I learned the curriculum, and I kind of knew what to expect. And at a certain point, you just kind of get into autopilot mode. And I'm not sure about you, but when I think back about some of the teachers that I've had over the years, there was a ton of them that were like endlessly on autopilot mode. And I don't want to be there. I don't want to be that teacher. I want to be engaged. I want to be enthusiastic about uh, teaching the kids and about showing up to, uh, to be a teacher, you know? Those are some of the things that I think may be contributing to why I've been feeling this way and perhaps why you've been feeling this way. But understanding the why is only one part of that. So what can you do about it if you have been feeling this way? Because there are things that you can do to kind of shake that feeling, to shake things up a bit and kind of reignite the passion that you once had for teaching. So I want to talk about that in the next part of this video, but um, I think this guy is getting a little bit restless and I should keep moving. So uh, let's get going. We're going to find a new location and then we're going to talk about how we can avoid becoming bored in the classroom. I'm starting to remember why I rarely film things outside and it's because there's so many more variables, it's so much more involved. I can't control the lighting, like the lighting in the last clip was atrocious, uh, there's wind. My dog, like, the dog was overheating, and so I had to drive him home before I could continue with the video. Look, the sun keeps coming out, it's just, it's crazy out here, so, I mean, I can't really complain about the nice day, but, uh, or the view, the view is, like, pretty good. All right, so let's talk about what you can do if you've lost some of that enthusiasm for your ESL classes online. And the number one thing that I think that you can do is to change something about the way you teach. So what I mean is if you usually teach while sitting down, I would try teach standing up, at least some of your classes. That may help to sort of pick your energy up and really push it through the camera. If you've been getting bored with some of your props or your reward systems, I would try to seek out new props and new reward systems. Not only to keep your students interested and engaged, but also to keep you interested. If you're excited about showing off your brand new prop, that energy is gonna translate through the camera and into your student's room. So whenever I think about these types of things, I'm reminded of a quote from one of my favorite clowns. His name is Avner the Eccentric, and the quote is this. He, he kind of has this, um, these principles for eccentric performing. And one of the first principles is to be interested, not interesting. I think a lot of times as teachers, that's what we're thinking. How can I be more interesting in class? And I think if you think about it in a slightly different way, how can I get myself to be more interested in the lesson? Um, you may see better results. So what I mean by that is when I bring a puppet into the class to do whatever, instead of like not registering that the puppet is there, I always react and go, oh look, Mike is here. And then I divert my attention to the puppet. And I find that the more interested I am, the more interesting my class becomes. I'm gonna drop some links to some videos that I've made about you know, different props that you can build at home using very inexpensive materials. And that's the reason that I do that. That's why I'm always like building new props and puppets. It's not only to support the lesson and, you know, keep the student interested, but part of it is to keep me interested. And so I'm constantly trying to find new toys and new games that I can bring into the classroom so that I'm having fun. And if I'm having fun, I know the students are, I got a bug. I know the students are also going to be having fun. And it's not all about fun, but it is partly about fun. It really is. The students aren't going to come back if you're like a boring, mean, 
sleepy kind of teacher. The second thing that you can do to try to keep yourself more energized in class is to certify for more levels. I'm someone who teaches with VIP Kid level two to level five. So I'm constantly seeing students of different age groups, different abilities. We're talking about, you know, one lesson we'll be talking about birthday parties with a really small student. And it'll be lots of props and singing and fun and games. And then the next class I'm with like a level five student. And we're talking about the impacts of the environment and things like that. So that really helps to keep me interested in a lesson, you know. Again, going back to my ADD brain, I get distracted easily, I get bored easily, and so I like having a little bit of variety in what I'm teaching. There's a reason that they say variety is the spice of life. I don't like the quote, I find it really annoying, but it is true. So if you haven't already certified for a bunch of different levels, I would go ahead and do that. And finally, something that might help is to change ESL platforms altogether. That's something that I tried to do at the beginning of this year, or it's something that I did do. I applied to GoGo Kid, and I thought that by teaching in a new interface and some new curriculum, it might re-energize and restoke the fire that I had uh, in the previous couple of years. What I found through that experience was that it wasn't quite enough. It was too similar to the other companies that I had worked for. Um, the style was kind of the same. So going back to my point about professional development, I didn't feel like I was learning anything new. I didn't feel like I was developing um, as a teacher, but you may find different results. So if you haven't tried to add a second or a third company, maybe that's what you need. But that may also not be enough. You may need to teach something entirely different, something that is not related to ESL. And that's what I wanna talk about next. I wanna talk about teaching other subjects on OutSchool. All right, let's keep this thing moving. I'm gonna break down my little tripod here. And we are going to move to the, uh, the final location where I'm going to talk about OutSchool. Oh, couldn't do it. I'm absolutely roasting out there. This is why I make my videos at home. This is like, it's too much work. Uh, I do want to keep talking about out school so give me a second and I'm gonna drive us somewhere safely we're almost done here stick with me one of the nice things about out school is that you don't have to teach ESL you can teach whatever you want whatever you're most passionate about whatever you are the most skilled at for me that means juggling and photography those are the two things that I've started teaching on OutSchool and my list of classes is just gonna grow as time goes on. So I love that. It keeps things interesting for me and it makes all of my days different. One of the other nice things about OutSchool is that the earning potential per hour is a lot higher than some of these ESL companies. So just to give you a general ballpark, I mean, this all does vary because it's not one-on-one. -on -one. There, You can set the limit for your own classes, but for me, in my first four to six weeks, I've been averaging kind of between 60 and $100 per hour of teaching, which is a lot more than any ESL company that I've heard of. So that is certainly nice. There is a lot of earning potential, but with that comes inconsistency. Um, sometimes your classes don't get booked at all. You have to create your own curriculum. So there are pros, there are cons to it, but in my opinion, it's worth exploring. And the other nice thing is that if you offer a class and you decide after a couple months that you're no longer interested in teaching that class or that subject, <laughs> my air conditioner is leaking in the back and it, I don't know if you can hear that, but it sounds like someone's peeing. So if you get bored of the class that you're teaching or you wanna switch it up, you can do that. You are in full control. So I listed a class on rice cooking that no one seemed interested in. So I took it down. I don't list that class anymore. It's no longer available. So through a series of trial and error, you can find out the classes that kids are responding to, the classes that you enjoy teaching, and you can really control how enjoyable your teaching day is. I hope this video gave you a little bit of food for thought. I hope if you have been feeling a little bit, I don't know, bored or just down or low energy in class recently, I just want you to know that you're not alone. This happens to teachers all across the board, whether they admit it or not. I think we all kind of go through some of these lulls where we're not as enthusiastic as we once were. 
And it's up to us to kind of figure out how we can recharge ourselves and bring some of that energy back to the classroom. So I hope this video helped. If you wanna see more videos from me, please hit the subscribe button. That is one of the best ways to support a channel like mine. You can also hit the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm trying to do the outro. Sounds like I'm peeing. <laughs> I appreciate you watching, and until the next video, I will see you on the internet. Peace! Yeah.